Thank you. How does it work? Great? Woo! Yeah. Cool. So, I don't know what to say else about myself and about any cable. So let's start. Um, first of all, let me introduce myself. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. So my name is Vladimir, which is not so easy to spell and to pronounce because that's why I told you just call me Vlad or John. That's the easiest way. I use it everywhere in Starbucks and, and other places where someone asks me, how is your name? Well, and my iPhone is called John's iPhone. If you want to send me something through AirDrop, use it. Um, I came here all the way from Moscow uh, with a little stop in Bangkok. It was not so long flight as for other speakers. And I live in the same continent, actually, but very far end than Malaysia. You can find me on GitHub and on Twitter, where I try to post some programming-related stuff, and sometimes gets. I can't resist. Well, um, and uh, continue. I want to continue the Akira's talk with this kind of description of myself. So I'm a Rubist. That's why I'm here. I'm a Rails committer. Well, it's oh, do not be so fast. And I'm not a Ruby committer yet, but I am a Ruby committer, if you know what is it. If you don't know, feel free to ask me after my talk. I'm not going to talk about MRuby now, maybe someday later. Uh, I'm working on two Martians. Our original logo is like that, not like that. It's my own. It's the uh, only one like this. And uh, we're working on commercial projects that's not interesting, and we're working on open source projects, a lot of them. Some of them are on this slide. Maybe you know something. I hope you know at least one. And if you're not, I'm going to talk about one of these today. So enough introduction. Uh, let's go. And before I start, I have to drink. Sorry. I know. Do you know this guy? That's the first ever man in the space. OK. Any cable. Oh, wrong button. Sorry. That, that's it. What is any cable? Well, any cable sounds very similar to action cable, yep. And it's related to it. Uh, actually, it was built to solve some problems of action cable. But before I start about my project, uh, I would like to remind you what is action cable. By the way, who knows what is it? Who tried? Uh, not so much. Uh, who tried to do web sockets in Ruby in other languages? Okay. I'll try to explain to you what is going on here. So, Action Cable. Action Cable was introduced by DHH two and a half years ago at RailsConf Atlanta. And it was kind of a surprise. Uh, nobody knows that there are going to be a new feature, a new framework within Rails. Even Rails core team members didn't have an idea that it exists. Well, yeah. Aaron, I didn't ask you about using your tweets, but there are going to be a couple of more. <laughs> uh, so what is Action Cable? Action Cable allows you to uh, connect to your Rails application through WebSockets. It consists of several parts. Uh, the main part, which works with WebSocket connections, uh, let's call it server. Then we got a broadcaster. Uh, that's a part which is responsible for routing messages between cl clients, between sockets, uh, using abstract streams. And uh, channels framework, uh, as I call it. So it's uh, some kind of framework which allows you to write business logic for your WebSocket connections. And a typical channel looks like this. It's really simple, but it gives you in a view, what is it like? It's very similar to controllers, but you do not work with request response cycle. Do not render anything, of course, but you can actually. You just uh, manage how clients connect to streams, which streams they can connect with and cannot, and so on and so forth. So it's kind of uh, abstract controlling framework channels. And uh, so surprisingly announced uh, Action Cable was highly accepted by the community. A lot of 
Wow, this cool feature, we waited for it, IELTS 5 rules. Not but everyone, of course. And I'm not going to tell about whether I'm love action cable, I hate, you're going to figure out it in the end of my talk. And I'm not going to convince you in being a hater or lover. I just want to discuss uh, the bad parts and the good parts of action cable. So the good parts explains why it's so popular. And uh, the bad parts explains why I don't use it <laughs> in, this, uh, in, the uh, in the way it is now. So good parts. Uh, the first good part actually is the fact that Action Cable is just built in into your Rails application. You don't need anything, almost zero configuration to, st to start uh, running uh, your WebSocket server to bring real-time functionality into your application. Wow, that's cool. Because previously we had some solutions written in Ruby, but that required some uh, hacks, some additional coding to set up and run. Uh, the second good part is the channels framework, as I already mentioned, because it allows you to communicate, not to communicate, but uh, to access your business logic, you, all your application, your models, services, etc., from within web sockets. So it's not only to broadcast messages to clients, like you know, some past services like Pusher and so on. It also allows you to accept messages from sockets and do some meaningful stuff. That's great. So we've got, got full access. And uh, the third kind of good part uh, is JS client that just works. And uh, so we can just include it into a page and use. And if you do not want to modify it, it's OK. If you want to modify it, it's CoffeeScript. And CoffeeScript is, for me, dead. I don't know what it's written in CoffeeScript. It's hard to do some changes within the framework. but. The w what we have, what uh, that framework will work. It handles disconnections, uh, half dead connections, and so on. So it's OK. But what about the bad parts? Well, uh, let's start with a simple one. Uh, Action Cable is WebSockets only. And you may say, well, no, it's OK. Everyone has WebSockets. Actually, not. Uh, even now, in 2017, WebSocket's already eight years old, uh, but uh, we still don't have full support. And in Malaysia, for example, it's only about 92% of browsers support WebSockets. That means that uh, you cannot use uh, WebSockets for some crucial part of your application because some users might have not support. And uh, typically, WebSocket frameworks support some fallbacks for long polling, for example, but Action Cable does not. And, uh, the bad part here is not that no fallbacks, OK, that uh, its internals are highly coupled with WebSocket implementation. It's not easy to just write a uh, long polling adapter for Action Cable. It's going to be complicated. Uh, that's not a big problem. That's not why Action Any Cable was born. But the next problem, the first one of meaningful problems, uh, memory usage. Well. I'm going to explain it with a simple chart, which compares uh, similar applications written in Rails Action Cable and uh, other languages, uh, such as Golang and Erlang. They're all doing the same thing. We just connect 20,000 connections to the server. Do not, message, do, do not broadcast messages, nothing else. Just connect and handle. So as you can see, we need much more memory when we use Ruby Action Cable to handle too many uh, web sockets. And 20,000 is not that big for high load application, actually. Uh, I compare two configurations of Action Cable because, well, of course, uh, we can scale Action Cable by multiplying the number of blockers. Uh, and we need it to make it real time. And I'll show you in the next item, and we talk about performance. What does it mean, uh, performance? Uh, here I want to assess uh, real-time features of Action Cable. How, how real-time is Action Cable's real-time? How it's real? How slow, how, how le uh, small is lat message m broadcasting latency? Because uh, for me, real-time, I've been working on video conferencing for many years, so that, that those days, Real time meant for me less than half a second. 
That was real time. What is more, that's not real time. Of course, not everyone needs such a small latency, but let's go to benchmarks. I'm going to use uh, ready-to-run benchmark from uh, Hashrocket company called WebSocket Shootout. Uh, they build a benchmark and run it against about a dozen implementations of WebSocket applications written in different languages from C++ to Golang, Node.js, and of course, Action Cable. Uh, what is the benchmark about? We measure the time it needs a WebSocket server uh, to broadcast a message to everyone. So let's try to be simpler. Let's imagine I'm a server, and you all are WebSockets. You connect it to me. When someone of you tells me a message, say, I don't know, Ruby is cool, I had to tell this message to everyone else, to you, Ruby is cool, Ruby is cool, Ruby is cool, and so on and so forth. It will take an hour for me, I think. So the amount of time I need to rebroadcast this message to everyone, that's the way what we measure. That's our main metrics. So <clears throat> the less time we need, the better our performance from the real-time point of view. Uh, so let's go to benchmarks. Please keep seated because they're not so... They can shock you. So, what's going on here? First of all, Action Cable running on only using two workers is definitely not real time. We are more than 10 seconds on 3,000 of connections. Wow, it's not real time at all. You can communicate with, for example, in chat with someone when there is 10 seconds delay. With 16 workers, if you can afford it, <laughs> it's not cheap. Uh, I run it on 16 core, virtual core on uh, Amazon. Well, it's better, but it grows kind of linearly on the number of connections. Although um, Erlang and Golang implementations feels, feel quite good. Only about a second on 10,000 of connections. Uh, and I have to notice that uh, they're all connected to the same stream, so we measure the broadcasting time. Well, that's, I already explained what's going on here. And it can be explained in this way. I don't want to say that Action Cable is bad, do not use it. No, it's not th like that. Uh, Action Cable force you to choose between low latency and uh, crowded channels. So if you want to broadcast messages uh, when your stream and so serves about a you know, dozen of clients or maybe hundred, it's okay. It's going to be low latency, it's normal. But if there are thousands of simultaneous connections, latency grows and uh, it can be not suitable for your application. So. That's one of the problems I want to solve with any cable. And last but not least, let's consider CPU usage because we pay for that. And I'll just show you this. It is up and down. No messages, broadcasting messages. No messages, broadcasting messages. Kind of no room for anything else on this server. So, how to solve this problem? There is a one way we can choose. Just wait for Rails, Ruby free. You know, it's gonna be pretty cool. Better concurrency models. I think uh, less memory consumption. I don't know how long should we wait. As I know, it's gonna be 2020, at least, as I know. So, two years. For someone, maybe that's a solution. But I wanna talk about uh, the solution I came up with about a year ago, and it's called AnyCable. Oh, that's the beginning of the main part of the talk. Just to remind you, so Action Cable is just four blocks. Server, streams, broadcasting part, channels, just uh, abstract logic, and the client, uh, which actually is just a protocol. You can implement it in any language, but there is a protocol. And we already know that uh, the server itself is not so good when you're dealing with high-level applications. Other parts are good. They're useful, they, they 
easy to use. The rails way, you know, etc. What if we can move this part out of action cable to somewhere else? To handle web sockets differently and to handle all business logic and our good old action cable. That was the initial idea I came to my mind many years ago. <laughs> well, uh, those years I was programming in Erlang. We already have a uh, WebSocket server. And I was thinking about something like this, so we somehow broadcasting messages to Erlang. It can be just plain HTTP or Redis, sub up, sub, and whatever. And the uh, Erlang server, which has handled all the clients, uh, somehow translate action cable commands to action cable protocol to our Rails application. Well, that's a problem. How to solve this part? Uh, I had no idea. Well, I had an idea of building my own binary protocol over TCP, but I thought it wasn't easy to complete in a meaningful time. And then I found this project. Uh, this project called gRPC, which uh, can be stated as Google RPC, but officially people from Google deny this version. You know, no, 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 it's not about Google. But I think it's about Google because it's built within Google and is already used in some APIs. Uh, it's a universal RPC framework. What does it mean universal? Well, the idea behind it is to connect server and clients written in different languages easily. So you don't have to use specific language to use gRPC. You only have to be able to uh, compile your messages using protobuf and transfer, transfer, transfer it, uh, them using HTTP2. So that's exactly what is gRPC is based on. And uh, if we're talking about Ruby gem for gRPC, uh, it's actually a lot of C code wrapped with a small amount of uh, Ruby, which makes it fast uh, but hard to change, to fix, to modify, to do anything if you don't know C. Well, OK, I found GPC, thought, let's do that. But then I realized, oh, not every language is supported. Where is my favorite language called Erlang? Favorite after Ruby, of course. <laughs> so no, no Erlang. So I had to learn Go. And uh, that's the final diagram, which shows how any cable works. What is it? So we still have our Rails application, the database. Uh, we got a WebSocket server written in Golang, which connects using gRPC to RPC server, server which is actually uh, your Rails application with different endpoint, gRPC endpoint. And uh, we also use, for now, Redis to broadcast messages back to WebSocket servers when we need to do broadcasting, actually. So that's the final diagram. OK, why did I do that? What's the reason was? Let's consider some benchmarks. Uh, uh, for now, I have two implementations of WebSocket servers compatible with any cable, two projects, one in Golang, and I uh, finally invented gRPC for Erlang and built Erlang, Erlang version, because I'm more comfortable with Erlang than with Golang. Let's start with memory, and we can see that memory, which we need to run uh, RPC server and, uh, for example, Go or Go server to handle WebSocket is less than memory we need for action cable, much less. And it's about only twice more than we need for native Golang application without anything like IPC and so on. So it's pretty good. And it doesn't grow fast. Uh, CPU usage. Well, I think it's much more better. For Erlang, it's even much more prettier because Erlang scheduler is better than Golang scheduler. It's uniformly distribute the work. And just to remind you how it was with action cable. So we save a lot of resources. 
We don't need actually the 16 cores. We, I think four cores is enough for doing, to doing the same thing. And it's about four times cheaper. What about broadcasting time? Actually, that was the reason why I was doing all that. That's just, uh, okay. Well, it's almost the same as using simply WebSocket written in Go and or WebSocket written in Erlang. And I was surprised when I first ran this benchmark. I was afraid that, well, I introduced gRPC and maybe they're going to be a bottleneck. Maybe they'll be not better than Action Cable because it's just Ruby and here we got, for every message we just passing it through gRPC to Ruby, but it turned out that it works and works pretty good and uh, it solves our problems, actually. So, looks like we solve all problems. Let me demonstrate. I got the live demonstration. I don't want, I don't want to run and pre-record it. What does it mean uh, in terms of comparison? The same uh, kind of fake chat. Uh, the right side is connected to any cable, the left side is connected to action cable. So here we can see the lag between the messages. So any cable works almost real time, it's less than half second every time. And action cable is not so good. And uh, the good part of any cable is that it's easy to use, as almost as easy as action cable, because all you have to do is just to add a few lines into your configuration and jam file and run required servers. That's it. And now you have the same application working much faster and consuming much less resources. And uh, Action Cable, uh, we still use Action Cable channels. We do not rewrite any business logic code. That's the idea behind Any Cable. We don't want to write WebSockets differently completely. We just want to move low level stuff to somewhere else. And uh, when I say that uh, you can still use your action cable channels, uh, I should tell about some compatibility issues. Not all features are supported currently. We're going to eliminate all these two minuses in the future. But for most applications, it works. Well, you can read more on our website. It's got beautiful animation, which explains how it works and find all the required information on GitHub and Twitter. That's not the end. So, although initially any cable was built to make Action Cable better, the first question I was asked on GitHub, well, cool, how to use it without Action Cable, with Sinatra, or, or whatever? I don't want to use Rails, I want to, but I want to use WebSockets in my Ruby application. Mm. I didn't think about it initially, but I decided to, well, to close this issue by adding support for non-Rails project. But to add support for non-Rails project means that you have to rewrite uh, Action Cable channels part. And that's how Light Cable was born. So what is it? It's actually a kind of refactored and re-implemented Action Cable channels framework with no dependencies at all, even active support. <laughs> And uh, it's compatible with any Action Cable protocol, so you can use the same JS client. And it's out of the box compatible with any cable without any monkey patching. Actually, the result of my work on Action Cable itself, there are several proposed pull requests with Action Cable refactoring to reduce the high coupling. Not yet merged. I, got, I think never merged because, oh, that's another problem I don't want to talk about. Well, that's why I built a light cable, and it's already been used, uh, yeah, that's how it looks, with uh, just REC, so REC application with cable. And it's already used by people who, for example, use Hanami. Uh, they integrated light cable and any cable to Hanami, building such thing as like Hanami cable. <laughs> uh, it works uh, in production. It's cool. It's project lives under my profile, um, and some more cool stuff. So as I told you, the performance was the main reason why I decided to build any cable. Uh, but while, I bu while building it, I realized that there are other possibilities uh, to improve uh, action cable with any cable. 
using any cable. It's much easier to do with any cable. For example, uh, the problem I was stated in the beginning of the talk, lack of transport fall fallbacks, is easy to do when you use separate WebSocket service which handles uh, all the communication between the server and end user. Because from the Rails or cable app point of view, it's going to quack like a socket. It, it won't be necessary web socket. It can be anything. Any, any, anything you can choose TCP uh, socket, you can choose long polling and connect it to web, any cable web socket server, which translate these messages using RPC into action cable protocol. And uh, there is no difference between the way to connect. So this way we can solve uh, this problem. Currently, my implementation doesn't support fallbacks because I don't need it. Uh, but if I will need, for example, support old, old browsers or mobile browsers, I will just add ready-to-go solution for long polling and connect it to any cable, and that's it. That's all we have to do. So this problem we can solve. There is one more problem with action cable, which I'm going to demonstrate using this Example project which use action cable in production. No, 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 this cable. The problem is consistency. Action cable doesn't have anything to make your uh, kind of message passing consistent. Um, and this can be a situation when uh, uh, in two different windows, yeah, we see. We got different comments. This one is not here because while we were loading the page, there was a transmission into the uh, action cable, but we not yet connected to action cable, and we subscribed only after the page has been loaded, and it doesn't contain this message. The same thing happens when you're, for example, walking on the streets and going to the metro and the underground. You, you lose connection for a second, then some message is passing in, you come up on the ground, and you don't see them. Action cable doesn't provide any tools for that. And I think it is because uh, it's not easy to handle this just using Ruby without introducing external dependencies for storing messages. It won't be effect efficient. But uh, using Erlang, Golang, whatever, we can do that, and we do not have to disturb action cable at all. We can do this our side, at any cable side. This is the way I'm going to do a little bit later, I think in the end of the next year, if I had time. I already have an idea how it. I touch the talk. Okay. Oh, oh, yeah. So I have an idea of history streams, which allows you to store some messages and automatically push them to newly connected clients to avoid this situation of this temporal disconnect. It's it's about features. Uh, what we can do now. Um, I got about one minute, I think. And oh, sorry. Okay, I want to talk about one idea that came into my mind while I was flying here. I was thinking about well, what happens when you uh, deploy a new version of your code? You know, so for example, say Heroku, you got just Git push, and it restarts all the application instances including action cable instances. So what happens? All, all clients connected to these instances are disconnected. And they had to reconnect and resubscribe again, uh, which can cause some stressful situation to your server. But with any cable, you don't have to reload WebSocket server, because it's logicless. It's just a proxy server, kind of, which translates everything into action cable. So it, make, it, it can make your deployment, I told, uh, disconnectless. So your WebSocket clients should not disconnect to access your new version of your code. And if you had a lot of deployments, uh, we had a lot, not a lot, uh, comparing to Shopify, but <laughs> enough, enough. Uh, every hour at least one deployment, two, sometimes 10, 20. So it's not good to ask all WebSocket clients to disconnect. So with any cable, you don't have to do that. You have to implement something within WebSocket server uh, to 
you know, some somehow queue the requests before you connect it to the new version of the app. But this part should not be disconnected. Well, and a um, quick list of other features which can be implemented. Again, uh, WebSocket server side without needing to touch Ruby. We can add compression. We can add better instrumentation. I'm currently working on providing different metrics of what is going on with, within your WebSocket servers, how many messages passed, how many data transferred, how many connections, how many, 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 many. So I'm working on it right now because we need it for our project. That's a future of any cable. And uh, another feature, feature is that you can actually share WebSocket servers between different applications. So because it's logical as you just had to know where to trans to roll your commands. And it can be different applications, actually. So this way you can uh, consume less resources. You use one any cable server for different Ruby applications. That also can be a good feature. And uh, I think that's all I had to say, uh, except from thank you. Um, Very well I, I, I go. I go. Uh, I to answer the first question by myself yep. because I know <laughs> what the, the usual question. Me. What is the usual question? Yes, the usual question is: Do you use it in production? <laughs> and um, I had to answer not yet for a long time, oh, man. but uh, actually we finally launched it in production about a couple of months ago. All right, give it a hand. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there you go. And the second uh, question, no, we do not have millions of connections yet. <laughs> so we get about thousands. So actually, what, what feature we use is not low broadcasting time, but uh, low memory and CPU usage, which is necessary for us because we run in a containerized environment where every container should not com consume too much resources. Well, I hope I'll face the problem of high load from this, from the broadcasting point of view, the message rate, and so on. There's two questions. I already answered. I'm waiting for your questions. OK. Those are the important ones. Any more questions? Sure. Okay. Yeah, I can ask question. Do you have some built-in analytics for it to see oh. how many connections you have? Uh, that's what uh, was my last slide about. I'm working, currently working on it. Ah. So it's, I just, actually, I haven't begun. I'm j we're just discussing with our DevOps guys, what uh, what they want, and uh, how they want to take it. And I think it's till the end of the year. Currently, I'm working on the pre-release of version 0.5 with some features, and then I'm going to start to work on feature on new features, not uh, fixing bugs and compatibility issues. So yes, that's a roadmap number one, I think. Yeah. Any other questions? on any cable. Sure. Uh, hi. So I'm currently building a real-time messaging app using Action Cable. And after your talk, I'll definitely consider I mean, using any cable. But the question is, how do I determine when my app goes to production? How do I determine how many connections? And when it comes to Redis, about the latency? How do I set up all that without just waiting, see if the app falls down, and then, OK, I need more? I don't want to fall into that. I want to be prepared about my app requirements. So again, you're talking about how do I know whether I should switch from action cable to any cable, uh, to something else, OK. Yep. Well, yeah. According to memory, so we can just go back to the slide with memory. There is, of course, it depends on your application because when you load an instance of uh, here is it of Action Cable, you load the whole application for this application. Actually, you don't need the whole. Maybe you can reduce this amount of memory. But for connection, well, I don't remember how much the uh, the <coughs> application itself costs memory. But I think it's about, so we got 
about 3,000 megabytes for 20,000 of connections for 16 workers. So suppose that Rails itself loads about 200 megabytes, extract this, 200 is not no, I think too much, no. And then divide by 20, Thousands and you got something. I, I don't remember. I used to count this amount. Of actually, how does it cost to handle one connection? And I don't remember. Sorry, I I should do some maths here. It's not so easy. And so it's according to memory. Uh, CPU is always, always, almost always not good when you're broadcasting to many customers. So it depends on your workflow. Uh, do you have one channel to which everyone is connected to? So, for example, you're trans transmitting. Uh, some live events for sporting, for sports. Uh, so you get one page, everyone connected to the same stream, and you have to handle a lot of people. Then you hardly do that with action cable. If you your flow is to use, I know, uh, a stream per user, that's okay. That's no problem with uh, CPU and broadcasting time. Only memory limits. So we can see it when you run. Even then, you can you can simulate actually. So you can take this benchmark, just uh, write another scenario, which is your app scenario, and uh, see what's going on with your server. And uh, I have some tools to help you to benchmark. You can find it in my GitHub with, uh, to write you know declarative scenarios for WebSocket communication and to run it against servers. So you can use it for benchmarking too. Well, so we can talk about it a little bit later. So if you want to estimate how much resources will you need, there are some ideas I have in mind, but it's too long to talk here now. Thank Did that answer question. the question? Yep, awesome. Any more questions? Come on, guys. Is anybody else using Action Cable? Raise your hands. Anyone using Action Cable? Sir, do you have any questions? <laughs> <laughs> any pressing questions? No? All right, thank you very much. Another round of applause. Thank you, Vlad. Thank you.